the last algorithm we will learn. And for quantum computing, it becomes so popular or so famous it because Shaw invented this Shaw's algorithm. I forgot 1995 or 1996. Before that, people have been talking about quantum computing, but people did not pay too much attention. But Shaw's came up uh, with this algorithm saying that now if I have a quantum computer, I can crack all the password, password at no time. And then that's why people start uh, paying attention to it. Okay, so you will see that Shaw's algorithm basically mostly a classical part. Okay, but we use the quantum computer to do the most difficult part, which is called the prime factor, uh, prime factorization. Okay, so let's take a look. So you will see I spent quite a lot of time just talking about the background, okay? So first of all, the first thing I want to tell you is that encryption that you are having today, right? You log into Wells Fargo and type in your password and you send your password to there. You need to encrypt your password and then later you encrypt all the data transaction between you and Wells Fargo, right? I can try to intercept. I can go out, go to your home. I know where is the AT&T cable fiber switch. I just learned it. I just need to, um, uh, because my AT&T got some problem. I saw how they fix it. I know where my switch is. I also know where my labor switch is. In principle, I can put a device, just connect them because there's no law. I can just open it in public space, right? And then I can see what they have, are transmitting but I cannot because the important data they are doing are all encrypted. That's why you want to go to encrypted websites, okay? Now, um, so encryption, of course, is very important, but it, nowadays, most of the encryption, there are many different types of encryption, but the most popular and effective one is uh, related to the prime fat, prime value factorization or prime factorization. For example, the so-called RSA. I think it's named after the inventor, the initial of their last name. They wrote a paper, right? But there are different uh, type of RSA. It's related to prime factorization, right? If you're interested, uh, try to Google, go to Wikipedia, take a look why this is related to prime factorization, right? You basically have a public key, a shared, uh, 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 and then a private key, and only you and the bank uh, or your the one you're communicating to can try to can do a factorization very fast. People get the public key, can, public key, they, they cannot do that. But anyway, the goal is that I give you a large number, N. Okay, this can be a very large number. If you are able to find out what it is composed of, composed of two numbers, P and Q are prime values or prime numbers. If you can find out these two prime numbers, you will be able to uh, decrypt all, uh, all this uh, uh, scheme, and then you can, uh, it's just like the key, right? For example, if it turns out it's 21, then what are the possible prime number that make 20? Three, Three times seven. This is so easy, right? But now there's no known method that you can do it uh, in logarithmic scale, uh, scale, right? If I give you a 1,000 digit uh, decimal number, which is a uh, Products of two prime number. This is it's easy to construct. I just find two prime number, right? All of them, let's say ten digits, and then I multiply together. It becomes a twenty digits uh, 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 product. And I challenge you to find out what are the two prime number that uh, that cause that result in this product. Then it actually takes you a very long time. There's no no method. All you can do is what? Just try from one all the way to square root of that number. And then you see which one can divide that number. So take a very long time. And now all this encryption are based on this, right? So if I get the key, yeah, if I have supercomputer, I just put there, I try to find the prime number. 
but they design it so that the best super, supercomputer in this world may still take 100 years to find out the prime number. That's why you feel it is safe. Okay, yeah. Say again. It's not all encryption, but the most effective and commonly used encryption. And that's why now they, while we still cannot uh, implement the Schwarz algorithm, people, some researchers are already doing something called post-quantum encryption. It means that they start doing some encryption that the Schwarz algorithm cannot break. Because now you already see that the Schwarz algorithm is trying to break the encryption that is based on the factorization of the a big number, right? So I can come up with other scheme, okay? That's called post-quantum uh, encryption, right? Okay, so this is the goal, right? In all this encryption, this uh, all this that we are doing nowadays, you can see that you, you just go to Google, all this secure com com communication when you're logging into the government website, uploading your file, the VPN or the banking, most of them are based on this, right? So, but it's also interesting to find another thing is that this prime factorization mathematically is equivalent to finding the period of a function that I'm going to describe. Okay, so this is very interesting. Right? You need to know the math and computer science well. I am not good at this, but you just trust me because I trust other people, right? So encryption is related to the factor prime factorization. And in order to uh, find this uh, factorization, the mathematicians know that it's equivalent to finding the period of a certain function. So what is this function? This function is this. F of subscript a n of x equals to a to the power x modulus n, right? I will explain this one by one. Right? First of all, this n indeed is the number we are looking for. We try to factorize it. What is the modulus n? Modulus n basically is, an, uh, if you learn number theories, you learned about that before. If not, basically is finding the remainder of a to the power x divided by n. Okay, so this function has two parameters and one independence variable. Okay, it can be f of x of a and n, right? a is another number. And how do you calculate? You calculate a to the power x and then find the remainder when it is divided by n. Okay, now you won't understand now, right? Let's do an example. For example, let me see if I have more pages. For example, n is 21. That is the one I just said, right? I want to uh, factorize uh, this number, but I don't need to factorize this number uh, using the way I just described. That's another equivalent way. I can try to find out, for example, I need to guess. I need to guess a number A. This one is guess, okay? I guess you can choose anything. But for example, I guess A equal to 11. You can pick any numbers, okay? I guess this number. And then I'm going to find this. What is A to the power X modulus N? The first one is 11 to the power zero modulus 21. Okay, so I start with X equal to zero. What I'm doing is x equals 0. What is 11 to the power 0? 1. And then what is 1 divided by 11? The remainder. 1 divided by 11 is 0 plus 1. Right? Remainder, right? 1 apple divided by 21 students. No. At low, you get nothing and remain 1, right? So this is 1. Okay? So that is the meaning of this function. Let's do more. Then I go to the next one. What is 
more 11 to the power 1 modulus 11. So look at this, right? This is what we are doing the function. Uh, may, maybe I should even write this in this way. This is... Uh, So I, I actually should not have this. I, I don't want to write this. Let me just, you, you are okay. Don't, don't worry. You, you don't need to erase it. You wrote. This is just like F of 11, 21, 0 equal to this. Do you see that? And this is F of 11, 21, 1 equal to this. Do you see that? The X is equal to 0. I start with X equal to 0. Capital N is 21, and I was guessing, I, I tried to try A equal to 11, then this is 11 to the power 0 modulus 21 equal to 1. Any questions? Is that clear? Okay, this is a function we constructed, right? Then how about F of 1? What is F of 1? F of 1 is a, which is 11 to the power 1, a to the power x, modulus 21. What is that? Say again. Someone say 11, right? 11 divided by 21 equals to 0 times 21 plus 11, right? Yeah, so the remainder is 11. Because modulus means find the remainder. Okay. Now, what about f of 11, 21, 2? What is that? 11 to the power 2 modulus 21, 121 divided by 21, which is about, you divide it by 25, uh, right? It's 105. And 121 minus 5, 105, 17. is 17, right? No, 16. Yeah, 105. 16. Yeah, this is 16. The remainder is 16, right? So now you probably cannot follow, but you just trust me, the remainder is 16. Ah, uh, 16, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, do I have enough space? I would rather continue from here. So I continue. F of 3, right? You did not calculate. I can tell you the remainder is 8. F of 4, the remainder is 4. And then F of 5, the remainder is 2. F of 6, the remainder is 1. Okay, by lumber theory, once I repeat here, then you will keep repeating. If you do F of 7, you should get 11. So what is the point here? When it is 1, when it is 0, I get 1. When it is 1, I get 11. 1, 1, right? From 11 to 16, 2, 16 to 8, 3, 8 to 4, 4, and then to 2, right, 5, 6, 7. What is the period of this function? Right, you keep increasing x from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then the period, did I... No, it is 7 or 6? Six? 6, right? Because you start from 0, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? Period means that you every other 6, you will repeat. Right? So based on this, then we say that the period of this function ER equal to 6. And now I'm going to tell you that you can use this R to find the prime factor very fast. But finding this period is very slow. 
is as low as just finding the prime factorization. Okay, any questions? I just said the context. And basically, you will try, you you don't learn anything new, right? You just uh, trust what I say, right? And then if you want to learn more, you can learn from other sources. Now, then how is this purified thing related to the prime factor? We will learn a little bit more. First of all, a to the power zero modulus n, what is that? No matter what value of a, what is that? Huh? One, because a to the power zero is one, right? One divided by anything as long as n not equal to one, and definitely we are not interested in n equal to one, because it cannot be factorized into two number, right? Two prime number, right? Because the first prime number start with two. Right? We say we say n not equal to one. So a to uh, to the power zero modulus n must be equal to zero, right? And I'm going to write it in this way. I'm going to write it as a to the power 0 equals to 1 modulus n. This is okay. People write it in different way, right? So the first part just look like a regular algebra. A to the power 0 equal to 1. And then later we have a, sometimes we have parenthesis, parenthesis. If not here, I don't do that. We know that here is talking about modulus n. Okay, there is one thing. How about a to the r equal to 1? And I say, therefore, a to the power module to the power r also equal to 1. Why is that? What is r? Remember? I just say that r is the period, right? Then, of course, a to the power 0 is 1. Then after r, it must be 1, right? Because that is the period by definition. Period means that f of x equals to f of x plus r, right? This is the period of the function, right? After f e r, I get the same value, right? So if a to the power 0 equal to 1, a to the power r must be equal to 1. Because this is the f of f function, right? Right? This is exactly this function. f of x is a to the power x modulus n, a to the 0 modulus n, right? This is the result. One is the result. Okay. Now then we can trust that we can, of course, we are not proving here, but people prove that already. We we'll treat this as like a regular algebra equation, right? So then we can have 1 minus 2. It gives us what? Or 2 minus 1, I should say. 2 minus 1, like a regular algebra, then you have a to the power r minus a0 equals to a to the power r minus 1, because a0 is 1, right? Equals to 0, right? Because 1 minus 1 is 0, and then a to the power r minus r. But this is not a regular algebra because... Uh, we know that we are talking about mod mod modulus n, but it turns out the equation are the same. I, I try to do that just at least you feel that uh, there's some connection, right? It's not completely black box to you. But you just trust me that this modulus uh, operation is in, in this uh, case is the same as regular algebra. This one is the, if I remove modulus n, this is very straightforward to you, right? A0 minus A R minus A0 equal to 1 minus 1. So A R minus A0 equal to 0, right? This one minus this one, these two equations. Make sense? Right? A R minus A0 equal 1 minus 1. Is that okay? Then I can do similar thing like what I did in the algebra. This is a to the power r divided by 2 minus 1 times 
a to the power r divided by 2 plus 1 equal to 0. And of course, this is modulus n, right? Okay. This is just like what? x plus 1 times x minus 1 equal to x squared minus 1. That is exactly what we're doing. This minus 1 times this plus 1 equal to this square. This square is a to the power r. I won't test this in the exam, but uh, it's a good understanding. Okay, then that is the theory. Here is the theory, right? Which we will not prove, and I also don't understand. If R is even, okay? If R is even, it means if the period is even, and A to the power R divided to the by 2 plus 1 is not 0, okay, in the modular sense. Then the factors of n, which means the p and q, p equals to the GCD of a to the power r divided by 2 plus 1, n. And Q equal to the GCD of A to the power R divided by 2 minus 1 N. What is GCD? Greater, yeah. Greatest common divisor, okay? The number, the largest number that can divide A to the power R divided by 2 plus 1 and n at the same time, okay? And the greatest common divisor that can divide a to the power r divided by two minus one and n. These are two numbers, right? So do you see what's going on again? We want to factorize n into two prime number, right? And it only has uh, one possible combination, right? Because any two prime number, they multiply together and becomes a product. The prime number itself cannot be further factorized. So that product must only have one itself and also that two prime number as the factors, right? So I want to factorize n into two prime number, right? Someone construct this. And how do I factorize it? If I know the period of this function, okay, f of x, this is the function. If I know the period, then I know that the two prime number is equal to the greatest common divisor of these two pairs. And again, I, people, the mathematicians, computer scientists told us that, tell us that to find the GCD is easy, it's very fast, okay? So now everything reduced to that. If I can find the period very fast, then I can find the prime number very fast. Because once I find the period, I can find the GCD very fast. So I can factorize n very fast. And then I can break all the encryption. Do you see the uh, rationale behind? Any questions? Run what? We will do that, yeah. Now, but then you see that I've been seeing A. I picked the A, right? You see that? We need R to be even. If it is not even, you cannot do this. We also need A to the power R divided by 2 plus 1 not equal to 0. Means that it's not div divisible. Uh, it does not uh, divisible by N. Okay? You are not so lucky. You not always pick the correct A because A is going to determine the period. Period is not just n, right? It also determined by a because it is a to the power x modulus n. If you have different a, you have different period. You might not get the even one, you may get the odd one, okay? But again, the good thing is another theory. For a smaller than n, 
you have 50% of the chance to satisfy both let me just call it one and two one uh, maybe call it a and b a and b where a is this one b is this one so you randomly pick a okay you don't know which a will work you just randomly pick it and half of them half of what you pick will satisfy both a and b meaning that the r the period is going to be even and then this one a to the power r divided by two plus one is not equal to zero so this is just a theory now what if you are unlucky you pick one that doesn't work then choose another right then you will say that it's a waste of time but the point is that now I have exponential speed up in the period finding okay so remember originally i need to take one billion years to compute now i only need to take nine years right so yeah i may need to choose another 18 years maybe that's not good enough in the human scale right uh, just divide everything by 100 right and then i still can find the answer very quick so in the past to create the password i need 100 years now, now i only need to take uh how many log 100 right two years to do it and maybe i can am i right only two years yeah yeah that's right yeah right and then i need to maybe i do something wrong maybe four years or whatever but but the the point is that i have an exponential speed up for the big number okay now let's do an example to look at how to find the gcd right and i don't think i will test this in the exam leader right because this is not the core but i want you to understand uh what is going on so let's take an example again use 21 okay and we already know that our equal to six right so what is the gcd of and we pick a equal to 11 right when r equal to six what is the gcd of 11 to the power six divided by two plus one and 21 right this is n 21 is n right so we want to find this this is called to the gcd of one three three two and 21 we basically need to find the greatest common divisor for 1332 and 21 okay now we can use the so-called euclidean algorithm i learned it when i was in the middle school i don't know if you remember it was like and you don't need to really remember you can google right but the point is this right you will start with writing the number one three three two and 21 and then for the large smaller one we write from the uh, larger side we start, we'll try to see what times 21 becomes one three three two okay and we find that it is 60 and uh, basically just do one three three two divided by 21 okay if you do that then uh the remainder is nine i only write the remainder you write the remainder okay something times 63 uh become 1332 and the remainder is 9 and then you repeat what times 9 becomes 21 right it is 2 right 2 times 9 is 18 and then the remainder is 3 okay and you do it again what times 3 equal to 9 3 right so the remainder is zero then you are done and this is the greatest common divisor for this two number which is three okay now we also need to find the gcd of 
11 to the power 2 divided by 6 minus 1 and 21, which is equal to the GCD of 1, 3, 3, 1, and 21. Uh, 1, 3, 3, 0, right, should be. Okay, so we do the same thing. I write 1, 3, 3, 0, and 21. Again, I do 1, 3, 3, 0 divided by 21, and then find the remainder, right? Uh, this one still, the quotient is 63. 65 something becomes some, almost 1, 3, 3, 0, and the remainder is 7. And then what times seven? You or twenty-one divided by seven is what? Three, right? So the remainder is zero, right? Because the remainder is zero, I'm done. Eh? So what did I do wrong? Oh no, 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 not not three. I should look at this one. I I wrote the wrong one. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, this, I should say this one, the remainder of the last one, right? And this is the remainder of the last one, should be seven. So this is seven, right? I mess up the algorithm. So you still do it in this way, division, but you look at the last remainder, and that is the GCD, the last remainder that you have. Okay, so here I show you that indeed 21 equals to three times seven, right? You can try this for other numbers or other A, Right, so in my test book, I have some exercise. You can try that, right, and see if you get the right thing, right? So, so in short, so now the goal is this, right? The goal is this. We will guess a. Guess an A, and then find the period of what? F of A, X, I mean N, let me, in, uh, N of X, right? And which is, this give us R, right? So what we just done is this, A is 11, N is 21, and R turned out to be six. Then we find the GCD to get the P and Q. Then we are done, okay? This one is fast. Guessing, of course, is fast. Number three is also fast. Okay? The problem is number two is slow. Okay? And we use the Shaw's algorithm to do that. And you probably have some idea why Shaw's algorithm is used for period finding. Because quantum computing is really useless to finding the exact results of a bunch of calculation. It's very useful to do constructive and destructive interference. Finding period is like this, because constructive and destructive interference is nothing but just the matching of the period or the mismatch of the period of the wavelet, right? So it is very normal, you will see that, yeah, Maybe we can use quantum computer to speed up the period finding. And that is the Shaw's algorithm. Okay, you have a question? Yeah, you just say. Yeah, so for you to be a children, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you satisfy, you will arrive the same answer. Yes. So this is the Shaw's algorithm, right? Looks very dizzy, but now you actually should be very brave when we see this. You will be able to decompose it. First of all, you recognize we have MSB, we have LSB, right? Make sure where are the LSB and MSB. Second thing I see that I have some input. How many bits do I have here?
How many bits do I have here? Well, what, what do you read? What does it say? It's even, but how many bits? Huh? Yeah, 2 n qubit. Okay? And how many bits do I have here? So I do need 3 n qubits. I'll discuss what is n later. And what is this? Hadamard gates how many qubits? To the power n, right? And that makes sense because I apply it to the 2 to 2 n qubit. You know Hadamard gates already. You look at this, you don't know what it is about. But at least you know it is a what? An oracle, an oracle, and it's a quantum gate. I did not tell you it's an oracle, but you guess it right. Every problem should have an oracle that corresponds to the problem, to the function you want to solve. But at bare minimum, this is a quantum gate. Must be unitary. All right, good. We need to learn later what it is. What is this? What is QFT? Quantum Fourier transform, which makes sense. We just say that we're doing purifying. We need interference, right? Two n qubit quantum Fourier transform circuit, and these are just a measurement, right? Here shows the oracle, right? Indeed, it's a what type of oracle do we have here? We have two types of oracle, right? What are they? XOR and you. The first one you said and the face oracle, right? What type of oracle is this? XOR, right? Because we're using this notation, right? Good. This is the Schwarz algorithm, right? So we use this as Schwarz algorithm is a quantum, do I have N in quantum? Quantum algorithm, for uh, finding the period of f of x equals to, which is f of x plus r. Okay, I, again, this f of x, if I spell it out, is f of n of x equals to a to the power x modulus n. Is that okay? This is the function it is trying to find, the period. Okay? Classically, you can imagine you take about order of n to find the, find the period because it is equivalent to the factorization. Or you just think about the period, yeah. Uh, you just need to evaluate all the function one by one until you see the repetition, right? And in the worst case, it is as long as n, right? If the period does not repeat early, right? If I have n that is 100, uh, it can be, the period can be as long as 100, right? It does not repeat, right? And quantum mechanically in the Schwarz algorithm, guess what is the order? How do we write it? Order of what? I just told you it has exponential speed up. So it will be log n. Okay. Right. So this is, so now we are good. Well, I did not expect that I have this <laughs> right thing. Oh God, I have this right thing. This is ugly. Right. So let me write here again, classically, you have order of n, and quantum computing, you have order of log n, right? Again, classically, you use 1 billion years. Now, I only need to use 9 years, okay? So what does it do? It first creates the superposition of many arguments. Makes sense. Quantum computing, you always want to do parallelism, right? So you use Hadamard gate. Then because you have superposition, you go into the quantum oracle, you evaluate all of them in one shot. Makes sense again, right? Quantum parallelism. 
Then we need quantum Fourier transform that we just learned to do the constructive and destructive interference so we get the answer we want, right? Because you have 10 billions of entries. I'm not going to measure them one by one, right? It has 10 billion possible uh, period, right? For a 10 billion number, a number that is about 10 billion, right? The largest uh, period can be up to 10 billion, right? I'm not going to try to measure one by one. I want to do some constructive, destructive interference that only the answer will stand out. And then when I measure, I only measure, it only gives me the answer, right? And then we sample it to get the uh, result. Okay? This is the idea, to be frank, right? If I did not teach Sean's algorithm, in the exam, I asked you to describe a possible way to do the factorization with the correct keyword. Then you should think about superposition, quantum parallelism, and then Fourier transformation and measurement. It must be one of the components in the algorithm, right? So even if you forget the algorithm in the future, please still